So uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, recently, I got um, my teacher's license from the U.S. Um, so I'm uh, eligible to teach primary school and uh, as a homeroom teacher, and also ESOL uh, from K to 12. Um, so right now, I'm working at the Indian International School of Japan. I started in August of this year. Um, beforehand, I was a student teacher at St. Mary's. Um, I, you know, I had to be there to complete my training. And then uh, beforehand as well, I used to work at uh, British Council for a good five years. And then I had a few jobs here and there, uh, work at Temple University as well for a little bit. So um, yeah, <laughs> if you have read this, so this is what I'm gonna be talking about. Um, just five tips in presenting culture uh, when teaching. So I've got a, a short activity for you guys. Um, so I've made slight changes. Um, I've managed to ask my colleagues to say phrases in their own language. Um, so don't worry about the meaning. Um, just please guess the language. So uh, do me a favor. If you can just um, take a screenshot of this, or if you're a fast writer, you can uh, quickly write, the, uh, write these uh, languages down. Um, I'll give you guys a quick. 30 seconds or so, one minute. Uh, just, take a, just take a screenshot um, and have a pen and paper ready if you, if you have it in front of you. Okay, just uh, 10 more seconds. <laughs> okay, are you guys ready? Okay, I'm guessing that's, that's a yes. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm gonna show, okay, so for example, I'm gonna say something and I just want you to guess which language it is. Okay, so just going through it, uh, Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Sunda, Tamil, I think it's a region in India, Hindi is the national language of India, Punjab is also a regional language of India, Bangla is Bangladesh, Arabic, Arabic, Nepali is Nepal. Okay, um, so here we go. Ready? Okay. So with your best intuition, <laughs> which language is this? Just give it a guess. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so the answer is, it's Bahasa Sunda. And it means, how are you? Okay, so Bahasa Sunda, you can just cross it out. Um, there'll be no more Bahasa Sunda. Okay, <laughs> next activity. <laughs> Ready? Boop. My question. <laughs> Me kush who? What do you guys think? Okay, the answer is Hindi, and it means I'm happy. All right, so two down, Bahasa Sunda is down, Hindi is down. Okay, so my colleague got super excited and he wants to do another one, so here we go. Okay, Mau Kamana. It was really fun for me to learn these phrases too, so Mau Kamana. And the answer is Bahasa Indonesia. And it means, uh, where do you want to go? Okay, next language. Ready? Sabduitel. Sabduitel. Um, this is Tamil, and it means I'm full. <laughs> 
All right. Uh, next up. Ready? Okay, so it's four down. And this one is Punjab. What's the time? Okay, two more. And this means see you tomorrow in Bangladesh. <laughs> and last one is this one. Okay, 50 50, 50 50. And this one is Arabic. Okay, so um, how do I check the chat? I have to learn how to check the chat. Um, I'm watching the chat for you. I don't okay. know if there's any questions. Oh, awesome. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, in the chat, just very quickly, um, what did you get out of seven? Three, two, zero. <laughs> Eight. Whoa. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, th this, this was a really good kind of, um, warm up activity. Um, I mean, it, it took me a while to ask my colleagues and, you know, making, making sure that I have time to, to kind of like run around and find my colleagues and make, making sure that my colleagues also have time. But it was really fun. Um, obviously, I had a more, a uh, lot more examples, um, like Korean, um, Chinese, um, and also Russian. And yeah, so the, dis the disadvantages of this is obviously none. Um, the advantages of doing this activity is, you know, having fun with your colleagues and also just get more knowledge. And um, yeah, when I did it with my students, even though they're in grade eight and grade nine, they they had a good laugh, you know, like, oh, yeah, I've heard it before, kind of, you know, that kind of conversation. So it was really fun. Okay, so um, let me just, <laughs> uh, I hate the chat. Okay, anyway. There we go. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. I need to be right back. Hey, I need the iPad. Uh, while we're waiting, um, does anyone know Bidisha Zaman? Sorry, <laughs> my wife the, just took the iPad. <laughs> um, they're in the uh, waiting room. Sorry, Johan, someone is in the waiting room and I was just asking if anyone knew who, who it was. Oh, this might know, sir. Okay, I'll no let problem. them in. Thank you. No problem. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of just want to add, um, it's really great for your students and um, it shows that you are communicating with other staff members. And it's just a great way to break the ice between teachers um, that the students don't normally have in contact with. And, um, and students will say things like, you know, hey, we saw your video at history art, history class today. And then, you know, and then it just breaks the ice and then students can get to know you know, teachers that they don't, they don't really um, have lessons with. So, yeah. And then, um, and then, yeah, also a fun activity is kind of like, you know, just handing out this kind of um, questionnaire. Um, I'm new to India. I'm new to the school. And at the same time, I'm new to India. Like, I, I just, I have no clue about India. So I want to get to know India more. Obviously, the current you know, the current pop culture. Um, uh, I'm teaching a textbook. And yeah, it's, it's really fun. I'm learning a lot of things. Um, obviously, students know more about India than me. So I have a lot of catching up to do. But at the same time, um, if you can make kind of materials uh, involving your, your colleagues, um, it just makes uh, materials more alive. 
and students can easily relate to it. And so, for example, just um, this is just one example. Um, so her name is Mira, and she lives in Pune. And I don't know where Pune is, so I, you know, made um, this is just part of the materials that I've made. Um, this is Pune, guys. Do you guys know where Pune is? And then, ah, oh, she likes this mango cake, mango burfi. And also she likes uh, Bakarwadi. And then um, a famous uh, tourist spot in, in, in her uh, hometown is Saniwarwada. And yeah, so it, I guess it's sort of teacher-centered um, materials, but uh, you can you can have a nice conversation with them as well. Like, oh, like, you know, some students have said like, oh yeah, I really want to go there. Haven't been there and things like that. And then you can just ask many teachers. So uh, yeah, that's the first tip is just to get to know, um, just kind of um, get to know your colleagues and um, make materials using your colleagues. And uh, for that to happen, you got to be organized, obviously. Um, obviously, we all have our eight hours at school or in university, and we all got our classes. We got to plan our lessons and then, you know, do admin work and stuff. So it's really, it, you know, sometimes it, it gets pretty annoying on your part because, you know, you're staying up until like 6 p.m. just to catch that one person, for example. But, um, you know, the reward, it's very rewarding. Um, and yeah, it makes my job easier as well. Okay, um, so yeah, and also when you're teaching culture, um, I remember um, I attended one uh, presentation at Kanda Gaigo University, and there was this one teacher, um, he was doing um, a presentation on kind of like how to take your classroom uh, abroad. And then um, he, and he uses a lot of gadgets, like expensive gadgets. And, uh, and he was just basically showing his skills um, using technology to take the students and explore the world. So that is good and all, but I mean, um, uh, for, you know, for teachers who can first, who cannot afford those gadgets, um, I think it's pretty hard um to do that so um yeah just use use resource use people um that will be my biggest uh advice and then you can use you can use people to you know facts checking um if you're going to present something that you're not comfortable with for example um i did uh, a lesson about egypt um when i was student teaching and i just don't know a lot about egypt um, so I asked my friends and you just use the power of social media, the power of, um, uh, technology, I guess, in a sense, um, uh, use your connections and just don't be afraid in asking questions. <clears throat> so yeah, this, this is my friend and we met in Hong Kong and we still keep in touch and she was really kind in helping me answering the questions that I asked. Um, and uh, yeah, one good activity, well, I'm an international school teacher, so um, I have kind of the freedom in deciding which assignment that I wanna assign as an internal assignment. Uh, but at the same time, when I was working at the British Council, I was, you know, I was mainly teaching young learners. I also had the freedom to decide two of the assignments of, you know, two of the assignments that students will be assessed. Uh, I like recently I learned how to make a documentary. So um, I'm just gonna show two minutes of this. And um, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're looking for kind of like a really uh, challenging assignment for your students, obviously depending on your student's age group, um, elementary school, I wouldn't bother, uh, junior high, high school or university, uh, this would be kind of like a good challenge for them. Um, and obviously you have to uh, care about their English level as well. But because um, I'm teaching at international school and kind of like, I just want to get, you know, just get them to do the research and um, just be familiar with other cultures. So I told my grade nine and grade eight students, uh, for grade eight, I told them to find a tribal group and I want them to make a documentary about it. And for grade nine, I just told them, you can 
choose any country you want, but I want you uh, to make a documentary. So I sort of gave them like prompts, like, um, you know, for example, you can research about education, you can research about the current prime minister or the previous prime minister, you can research about um, the food and just anything really. And I did research on um, Russian education. So uh, just one minute of this. present you my findings on education in Russia. First, we will look at general information on education in Russia, with some comparisons to the situation during the USSR period, the Soviet era period, and explain the social problems that Russia is currently facing. Many of us who are not familiar with education in Russia perhaps know about the unique features of Russian school culture. As you can see in the pictures, it's very unusual for girls. White apron on black tops or brown dress. However, according to Tanya Golubeva in 2016, the school uniform during USSR from 1922 to 1991 was not comfortable. It is interesting to discover that the school uniform first arrived in Russia from England in 1834. As you can see, the apron over a dress for girls is a tradition continued for now almost 200 years. There was a period where Russian students did not need to wear school uniform from 1994 to 2013. But in order to tackle social inequality, mandatory for wearing school uniform was put in place again in 2013. There was also an argument of whether the promotion of other religious beliefs was accepted by the Russian society, as children were wearing traditional red religious clothing to school, considering that Christianity is the main religion of Russia. Schools start on September 1st, an interesting tradition is that students giving flowers to their new teacher to celebrate the day of knowledge. As for the next year, knowledge will be passed to the students from their new teacher. General education is 11 years and at 17 or 18, students would have finished high school. According to one Russian According to my findings, schooling, even today, is stressful for the students. Students need to work hard at school if they want to go to university, and grades matter significantly. According to one Russian friend who is now 32 years old, children study six days a week and the teachers are very strict. One interesting fact is that university is free. However, it is not a specialized degree. So to what extent a free university degree is worth the time investment would be. So yeah, um, um, so I encourage the students to, um, you know, if they have, uh, you know, from their father's connection or something, um, family connection, um, for example, if they want to research about um, China, um, can they uh, have access to uh, talk with a Chinese person and ask them questions? Um, and um, I think, I, and, and yeah, that, that makes, I guess, you know, um, it fosters a lot of skills there. Um, you know, you got to prepare your questions. Um, you gotta be brave. You gotta make sure that you have the time to talk to him. Um, you know, communication with the family as well. So, um, yeah, when teaching culture, I think that's really important. Just to, just to be more sociable um, outside school. And um, yeah, so yeah, the disadvantages none. Um, more accuracy and in your findings and also uh, keeping in touch with your friends and um, I guess uh, fostering relationships between your family and with students family and uh, students friends and etc. 
Um, so, so when teaching culture, um, you know, as much as possible, you want to expand your network. And um, so balancing between enjoying your time alone and networking is really important. Um, so I've always had kind of like itchy feet. So, you know, I've worked at many different places. Um, so on top of my full-time work, um, if my full-time work allows me to do some part-time work, then usually I take that chance. Um, and um, this is a really nice quote from my friend. Um, it was fortunate to be able to cross path. One of those ones that remind you the odds of meeting everyone you meet in life is about a million to one. Um, so the good thing about uh, working at different places is the people. Um, you definitely meet a lot of people and that will uh, act as uh, a good factor in um, expanding your network. So, um, so this is my school, um, just a view from one of the classrooms. The pool looks pretty dirty just because um, they haven't uh, fixed it for a long time. And um, so I'm currently working at the Indian school. And, um, and yeah, I mean, um, if you don't take the time to, I, I gotta look at the time. Okay, I still have 10 minutes left. Okay, so if you don't take the time to get to know your colleagues, um, uh, I think it's just a waste of resources. Um, uh, yes, yeah, just try and, um, you know, spend time with your colleagues, uh, expand your network, and then they can help you um, make good materials. Um, especially if you're focusing on culture. So um, this is, I'm just gonna show you uh, a string of pictures, uh, you know, so I met this person uh, at the British Council. And um, so I took out a class uh, teaching um, teenagers on Saturdays. And from this particular part-time job, I was able to meet a lot of awesome teachers. And now we're super close together. Um, when I took out this job, um, met a really awesome British teacher, and then she's helped me a lot with uh, just life in Japan in general. And um, and when I went to a, a summer camp, um, and I met this teacher, and then now we're really just best best buddies. Um, um, just really great. He's he's Canadian, and um, now he's a truck driver. So when I <laughs> So I asked him if I can use, you know, pictures of Canada for my lessons. And he's like, yeah, feel free to do so. So it's really great. And um, uh, this was uh, me working at a university, um, just intensive EAP course. Um, that was really good. So yeah, uh, working at many different places is really good. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, uh, if you, if you have the energy, please, uh, I recommend it. But if you're just super tired from your full-time job, then I wouldn't recommend it. But, but yeah, if you can. Um, so yeah, tips to expand your network. Uh, yeah, when you, if you're considering part-time job, just never really think about the money. Um, uh, I mean, yes, money is important. If it's like an hour for a thousand yen, then, you know, it's, it's not a good place to work. But yeah, um, you know, 2,000 yen, I think it's a good, it's a good call. Um, it's not much, obviously. Um, obviously, a better job would be like 3,000 yen an hour, 4,000 yen an hour. Um, some of the jobs that I did, um, just random part-time job, um, I got it for 2,000 yen an hour. Um, my wife will complain that I will spend too much time planning for the lesson and uh, I don't get anything back, like, you know, in terms of financial. So, but, you know, I, I was able to make new friends and now we're still good friends. Yeah. But yeah, less complaining. Um, uh, you know, it's really hard to not complain, right? Um, especially in your full-time job. Um, uh, you know, there's so many things that you wish that the management would, would have done. But, uh, you know, if you just spend your time complaining a lot, then, uh, you know, you'll, you're missing out on... Who, who are your who are your colleagues so so uh, less complaining I look at it 
uh, positively as a learning curve. Uh, try to promote yourself. So I will talk about more about this and um, and just improve your language skills because um, well I you know I'm originally from Indonesia. I grew up in New Zealand, and as you can see, sometimes I make you know uh, stupid mistakes when I'm talking in English. I try to be as accurate as possible, uh, but sometimes I just make mistakes. Um, so you know when I first came to Japan, I, I would say my English is not was not this great. Um, I, I spent a lot of time kind of like, okay, brushing up my pronunciation, brushing up my grammar, brushing up my writing skills, reading skills, listening, speaking. And um, I got to a point where, you know, when I meet someone and I'm speaking in English and they know that I'm not a native speaker and, but they're pretty impressed, then it's just, it's just like sparks just happens. It's like, hey, you know, uh, how about we collaborate, you know? And um, yeah, so that's a really good way. Um, in, just keep on keep on going and improving your language skills and um yeah just this is just like uh you know a bragging uh thing um i i collect bank notes I, I i don't know just love it um so i have over about i have over 500 bank notes and then um and yeah i mean uh this is kind of like one of my dreams come true actually um becoming a history slash uh social studies teacher so i can use my banknotes, I can take good pictures, and I can show sort of features of the banknotes, for example. Um, oh yeah, this is uh, an activity that I would like to do it with you guys, but there's no time, so I'm so sorry, I'm gonna skip this part. But um, yeah, I could make really good um, kind of like quizzes and also uh, presentation using my banknotes. For example, I show this map, and um, so, and I'll show these pictures, and then I want them to, you know, uh, have a guess, like where, where is Mangal Mangalyan? Uh, where is Red Fort? And then you know, I'll show their answers and yeah, uh, good fun, good warm up. And uh, yeah, lastly, um, last five minutes. Uh, so it's really important um, to build your, uh, you know, to promote yourself. You know, have have an existence in the, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of arguments about this, you know, I, I know some teachers who are just like, and I'm sorry, I'm not a Facebook guy. Um, I'm just so scared of social media. And there, was also, there are also teachers who are like, hey, I'm okay with anything, you know, um, the more the better. So I'm, I'm in that group, you know, I don't mind um, exposing myself in social media. Um, I have my own website, which I will show you. I have my own YouTube channel. It's not, it's not great, but I make materials and I'll just post it there. Um, it's really great actually, because um, I have a really small computer, 120 gigabytes. So, and I make so much presentations, like, uh, you know, for every lesson, I would like to have kind of sort of visual materials to show to my students, just to make the lesson more engaging. And then it adds up, you know, um, you know, just out of sudden, I have like 60 gigabytes worth of like keynote presentation. So I just kind of like upload it on YouTube. Um, so if I, if I want to use it again, I can just access it and I can just delete what I have here. So, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, promoting yourself is really great. For example, like presenting in, uh, to an audience like this event right here. Um, and then for example, uh, the people that I'm meeting, like right now, like I haven't met them and uh, I don't know them. So I guess it's time, you know, um, we can be friends and keep in touch. And perhaps maybe Edo can give me another opportunity to present again in, in, in another presentation. But, you know, um, it's just really great. So uh, yeah, just, I guess just don't be shy. Um, uh, you know, email somebody if, if they're looking for a presenter. Um, so yeah, I have like my own kind of like Facebook business page. It's not really a business page. It's just me um, posting pictures of my daily lives as a school teacher. And um, yeah, even that, you know, um, I've been doing it for a good two years right now and I have about 4,000 followers. I just don't know who are following me. So, um, and you know, it's not like I spend like hours and hours, you know, um, thinking every post I, I upload, I post. Um, I just take a random picture. This is what I did today. Today was a tough day. 
pictures, pictures, pictures. And then, you know, out of a sudden I have 4,000 and then I was found. I was found by, by Marek. And um, if you're in the TEFL industry, I'm sure you know who he is. He's pretty famous um, for advocating for non-native speakers. So pretty sweet. Um, and then when you have a lot of, I guess, when, you, when your connection is, you know, very broad, um, for example, if you're trying to make a lesson material on, I don't know, chili, and you happen to have a Chilean friend, and you can, you know, definitely get uh, better uh, answers rather than finding it on the internet. Yeah, um, you can check out my website, which is johansensei.com. Um, you know, I, I have a section on just blogging, and also I have a section on professional development. Um, you know, people can see where I got my qualifications. Um, you know, people can see where I presented, people can see my publications. And um, yeah, um, I try to write uh, blog posts related to teaching um, just to help, you know, uh, non-native speakers. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there are sections for native speakers. For example, like um, my, my personal favorite is Tips to Ace, the British Council interview. Um, a lot of my good friends uh, have found it pretty useful. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't get the job. I'm so sorry for them. But, um, you know, they found the, the, the article useful because the questions that the British Council asked um, was in my article. So pretty cool. And yeah, that's it. Um, so presenting culture, yes, I guess you have to be a little bit more of a social butterfly. Um, if you're shy, um, there's always social media, right? Um, you don't have to meet the person face to face. Uh, you don't have to meet them in Zoom. You can just, you know, uh, write in the chat. Um, so I guess that's one way. Um, but yeah, I mean, try to be more flexible. Um, try to meet more people. I mean, it's, it's really hard, I know, if you're very shy. And uh, just work on your soft skills, communication, organization, and teamwork. So, um, yeah, if you have a, you know, uh, it's, this is really fun for me because uh, having my own website means um, I want to be organized. I have to be organized. Um, so, for example, if I'm out and about um, and I just try to take as many pictures as possible. So, for example, if I'm teaching about, I don't know, weather, it's like I look at my phone. It's like, oh, I have weather on snow, uh, pictures of snow, rain, and um, sunny days not just you know random pictures on the internet so that's really nice just to make it more authentic you know um when you're presenting something and yeah uh if you have any questions uh i'm here thank you so much for listening all right thank you very much johan for your interesting presentation uh please join me again in saying thank you to johan yay thanks guys thank you